Hello everyone and welcome back to Loco Shortline Operations where we are doing the first of what I hope will be many visits to other people's maps. Yeah, this is the first submission I've had which is from Libra and we're going to take a little explore of his map today. As you can see we're starting off here at spawn so we're going to run the intro and then I'm going to take you a bit more through the video. So yes guys, as I mentioned at the start of this video, we are here on Libra's map, here on map one of Loco Short Line Operations, and we're just gonna have a look around here at his spawn area. So basically there's spawn. Got a nice long side in there, so if he does need to spawn a load of cars in, he can run them down there. Got a nice loading area over here, actually. This I like. So, nice and wide. Or if you need to load vehicles onto a flat car. And then, over here. Come over the vehicle crossings. Got a four-track engine shed. One of which is a through road. And then we can switch back, run round. And then this is the track that gets you over to your standard goods and small yard just up here. Now he does have a stub end of a siding there and also one here. So I do wonder. If that means he's going to be expanding out at a later date. It's worth noting that actually at the time we're recording this, this actual save is about a week or so old. So it may be that he's already expanded those. But incidentally, if you want me to feature your map on here, the best way to do that is give me a shout on the official Discord. You can find me on there and maybe either PM me with a link to your map save game or just give me a shout in open chat and we'll go from there. But anyway, so Libra's play, he's actually set up a nice little scenario for us. So what we have here is a couple of I think these are Jeeps. Yeah, these are GP 38s. And a cut of cars. And the instructions he's given me is have a look around and then take these, which are low on fuel, and run them down to the yard in the south, whereby it says to uncouple them and run them into the fuel sidings for refueling and then we've got more instructions after that so let's jump on board these first of all so, i'm going to get them started right, come into here start that one up into our lead cab unit just going to be using the UI controls today not overly familiar with these locos so easier to do it like this 
give these a nice gentle tug out. Like so. Now I believe the route should be set to take us all the way down. So let's go have a look. As you can see, there's a few places where he suffers from the same thing we all do, which is the ground not being perfectly flat. It does, if you're not careful, cause some of the tracks and sleepers to sink into the ground. Now, there is a way of avoiding that, but then, of course, the trade off is you may end up with your track higher than a parallel track. So, um, something to be aware of. But anyway, we are pulling out here, headed south. And what is generally accepted to be south, anyway. There is a bit of contention because the sun actually sets if you have the time of day on. It sets in the wrong direction, but I digress. We are heading, in conventional wisdom, south. And there's a few different ways of doing it. I went up on the bank there. As you can see, we're taking a nice straight bridge here. Other people have curved round and gone round the side here. Whichever way you do it, you generally end up going through this little valley here because it's just the easiest way of getting from spawn to the south. give it a little bit more power actually at least until we get over the hill because that's where most people differ it is once you reach the peak here it's how you get down the other side and believe me I've seen all sorts I've seen six or seven percent grades flying down I've seen nice long gentle ones you can curve it this one at least seems to be a straight shot down and wait for the and get over so 3.1 percent grade down which means if you're coming the other way that may be a bit of a pull Probably not too bad. See a bridge over to our left. That's likely to be going to the coal mine. And you can possibly just make out over there in this circle. And yep, so line does branch off here. That curve round, but seems like it might be a sharp curve to double back to there. Curve along here. Oh no, you can see it. I'm gonna go over this gully on a separate bridge. And there you can see in the distance the whole line coming over third bridge there. Yeah, it looks like if you're coming from the coal, you would have to turn around before being able to head north. Which, that's no bad thing. There's nothing that says in this game you have to be able to go directly from one place to every other place. Alright, so the line joins there and it splits again. So that leftmost track, of course, is going to take you to the loading point here at Heavy Good. This middle one gives you a run at the coal drop off, or you could come all the way across and 
Take this which I believe is going to be a bypass. Which, yes. So, uh, looks like this map is pretty much set up for single track running. Which, you know, if you're playing on your own, that's all you need. And I guess if you're playing multiplayer, it does set up for interesting things because you're going to be having to have trains waiting in side in so off for uh, trains to pass each other. So, yeah, that's cool. All right, those two lines, yeah, coming together here. And is this a bit of a dual track scenario going on? Or at least, probably gives the effect of a dual track. So, of course, if you've come around there like we have, there's no way of getting over to there, and vice versa. At least, not yet, anyway. Give it a bit more speed. Try now for its head a little bit. There seems to be no issues here. I believe the yard is over there at the sea, so we will do this run in its entirety. I was a bit unsure how long it would take to get down there, so... I wasn't entirely certain what to do. But welcome to the desert, folks. A few people have commented on this. Sort of offline. On their own builds. Oh yes, we've got a crossover here. Should we need it? But yeah, about it being a bit... Baron, which you know I get that and I know Joe is looking into the best way of bringing scenic assets in how we'd go about that would how would you control the building of them because obviously if you just let everyone have free reign they're just going to throw them everywhere and performance in the game will suffer. Oh, looks like there's been a little bit of an accident there. Dropping off some goods. Oh, we won't worry about that, we're not going past there today. So, it's looking like the idea will be when we've sorted out and got suitable assets in place, that you will actually use goods to be able to plant trees or buildings like you'll have already seen in my videos when we've built the refinery and other such things anyway so the line from that industry joins in here so yeah single track again down toward the city And as you can see from the two blue diamonds, there are two middle industries there, I'll call them. So they both receive and produce goods. And coming into the distance, you can just see a couple of engines over there and some wagons. So yeah, really not too far away now. Yes, I can start talking about what we can expect to see up here. So from the description, there is a refueling point. Get some brakes on. Yes, we should have a refueling point. There's various small refineries around, which one of which I can see there. So we'll have a quick fly over and have a look at that. He's off the brakes now. They said there was three 
few piece 38s which will be those ones there and a couple of SD 40s which will be those in the distance there that we can also use for the next part of our job so we'll get this in here first Is that off? That'll do nicely. Now, I'm not actually going to take these and refuel them right now. I may do it off screen, but don't feel it's necessary to do it right now with you guys. into the cab turn that one off I'll we'll jump down here so yes the scenario instructions were to either take these two SD40s or the three GP38s and there should be a rake of 16 empty tank cars somewhere for us to take north well Certainly not those. Uh, let's have a little wander around, shall we? So, got a stub end side in here. A couple of sidings that run through this shed. And we've got our refueling point here. And again, another switch or point that ends for potential to expand. And over here you can see we've got a Ural loaded up on a low wagon and a bunch of LDMs that are actually running. So not quite sure what their role is, whether that's an attempt at a breakdown train or what have you. Anyway, let's go and have a look over here. So this is our small refinery. Which there was an addition which mentioned doing some shunting if we wanted to. We could take these tank cars. And I don't recall where it said to take them, but as we're not making that journey today, we don't need to worry about that. Right, where... Is the sight glasses for these? I don't actually know if these are even empty or full. I'm not too sure on that. But anyway, yeah. So here we have our refinery. So I guess you'd produce the fuel, load them into these cars and take them out to wherever they're needed across the map. Let's have a look over here. Because here we've got four tracks. Oh, this is cool. This is like an inner city yard. Which at the moment is being used for a Fuel cars. We've got a bunch of shed to fill it out and make it look more busy. I like that. So this is coming out over here. Yep. We've got Nice, neat little Y here. That's cool. That's effective. And is this our train? It said 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 
Right, so this is our train that we need to come and get when we're ready. Um, some interesting load in there. And over here we see a couple of SD40s on a coal train, which is empty. So we've got road crossing here. Yeah. So these are our what industries would these be? Military goods and industrial supplies. So that's cool. Ah, so we've got yeah, another tiny refinery in here that well he did mention there was a few refineries in amongst the city so yeah i like that and then here this is a great idea so using some bridges you can see there he's effectively turned this into another industry would be nice to have some panels that we can actually fill in the back and enclose this building. Maybe leave it open at one end and then have this like loading dock. So, yeah, I like that. If you'd actually managed to get some box cars and park in front of that, it would look perfect. You know, we're not actually reviewing the map as such, we're just having a play around. So just some ideas, which are completely optional. And you can see there's potential for future expansion over here. Just have a run out. That is a monster building over here. I don't know whether he's part of laying this long siding or whether that's the proposed end. But yeah, we've got that there. Right, so let's follow this track round and see where we're needing to come. So we're rooted in to them. That's a good start. We're going to come around. Yep. Yeah. We use this track here. Again, more storage here. You can see or run around. Track here to drop off your crude oil. I said that is a dead end. So we're not going to come along that one. Okay. What we're going to need to do is let's have a look where we need to come. So we're going to be coming around on this outermost one. If that's set to bring us here, that's set to bring us on this track. Just want to make sure that we are ready to head out. So we've got the line onto here. Yeah, so he really has set it all up for us beautifully. Right, so let's go and get our cut of loco so we can start the next portion of the run. around here we are going to have to change this point here because of the track we came in on so let's go ahead and do that now and flip that one so if we were to use this cut of locos can we run through here 
I would have to say it looks like we can. Let's go out here. And zoom in. Zoom, 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 zoom. So we're going to be coming. On there, yep. Great route. So we need to change that one. Change that one. Run through there, run through there. Change that one. Change that one. Change that one. Get our run north. So we're going to be routed onto this track here. Okay. All the way up. Through here, excellent. Yeah, uh -huh. let's zoom out. It's going to bring us in. Okay, along there. Left hand track still. The middle track. He's now routing us over to the right into this second one. Okay, through here onto there. Excellent. Right, let's go get our three locos here, I guess. Oh, they're already set up running. Okay. Now the next question is... Right, reverse or forward. So... If I knock the brakes off... Yep. We are rolling in the right direction. Yeah. I really like how he laid this out. Not overly busy. Not overly massive either. This it looks like something that... A couple of people could come and have lots of fun running around on. Just going to run this round. Back that cut of wagons and we'll make our way north. actually our GP40s, though in game they are labelled as GP38s at the moment, and it's worth mentioning these skins that are applied at the moment are just temporary, they're what came with the models, so unfortunately you won't get the Merce Sealand in the final version of the game, or the Sioux. Or the CSX. <laughs> it may be that we can do a few of the liveries that run branded that are similar. And then there will be the option of, of course, eventually once we get the workshop integration set up, you'll be able to mod your own skins in. But that, that's way a ways down the line. At the moment, it would be better use of finding modeler talent than worrying about making sure people can do their own skins. So, come off the power a little early there. Let's just... Add a little bit more. I don't know if the brakes are on any of these wagons, so just gonna get in position so we can 
connect up. There we go. And the telltale sparks say that yes, indeed, we do have brakes on. Don't wind that off, just check. Nope. And nope. Right, so. Flip the reverser. And we should be good to haul out. Which we are indeed. Excellent. So away we go. Now, I will apologise at this point. I know we're coming up to half hour. So, apologies that this video is going to be a bit longer than usual. I'm not sure how long it's going to take us to get to our destination, but... I really don't feel like I want to cut this. I could cut some of the video, but I feel like it's not really going to do this map justice if we're cutting it out, because, of course, the whole idea of visiting other people's maps is so you can have a real good look around and may well be that we actually have another look here on Libra's map at the other areas that we don't get to cover today because this is just a small section of map one and having a look around we pass the coal mine but we didn't get to look down that line when we look on the map you see the line round Hearts Creek there's this line that comes over here with a triangle that goes back to standard goods there's a line that goes down here which goes to Lumberton Billy's Boards you know so and of course there's this line that goes down to Hydro Bay. And then we've got this line that goes up to Scrompton and across Timber Falls and beyond. So there's so much more for us to explore. And of course, Libra, I'm sure, is going to have built so much more after you've seen this video. So we will certainly be getting an updated version from Libra at some point and coming back. But in the meantime, as I say, if you'd like me to come and have a look at your map, then drop me a line and there is something coming very special to the channel, which is a look at Beaver Meadows. Now I am looking to stream that actually this Saturday, which I believe is December 2nd. So Hopefully you guys can join me over on Twitch for that. And yeah, we're going to have a good look around on that. Because what the Beaver Meadows guys have going on is something really special. Let's flip that switch on the fly. It's actually set for us to bring those smokers out um hmm it seems I haven't actually set up this route very well let's just concentrate here have I set this part up at least come out of here come out of here yeah so I got the last part right just not the whole in the middle part but yeah, as I say, the Beaver Meadows, that is a whole bunch of guys that have set up a community map over here on map one. And it, I believe, no, I get confirmation of this, but I believe it was started by Stormy, which if you go and look way back on my channel and I'll actually put a link to the video at the end of this 
to when we visited a very old map of his and he likes doing large yards. Stormy is all about the 80 car trains and in fact all of the guys over at Beaver Meadows are about their big American style trains. So that's going to be really fun to go look at. They've got so many yards. And not only that, they are running it like a full railroad. There's a website including switch lists. Um, you can track where every loco is. So when you do a job, you update the list of what locos you've taken, where they now are, whether they need refueling or not. And it also lists all the wagons as well, all the wagons and the trains they're in, their status, where they are, whether they need loading, all that brilliant stuff, whether they need taking somewhere. And that is so much to cover, I don't think I can reasonably do it here in a video. The video would be two, three hours long. So that's why we're going to live stream it. I may try and do a condensed, cut down version of a video at some point. But for now, for what will be my first real visit to the line, we're going to do that over on Twitch. Anyway, back to what we're doing today. So now coming off onto the dual track section, ready to head left. Give it a little more power. If we can get this up a bit more speed with our empty tank cars. As you can see, a lot of work has gone into this with the low bridges to try and keep the track nice and smooth and level, which I really appreciate. And it's not something I really be too worried about doing on my own map. Purely because it's a different aesthetic, it's a different way of thinking. My map is supposed to be about real short lines or branch lines. Uh, the bumpy track, you have to go a bit slower. You know, not all about your high speed, ultra smooth track. But that's kind of what map 2 is more about anyway, is you less well maintained track, shall we say. Whereas this really does give you the freedom to stretch your legs a bit more on map 1. Stretching our legs. We give it a bit more power, I wonder. I'm a bit concerned about the locos drowning out my voice, so I may have to tweak the volume in post production, but you know. Oh, we've got a bit of wheel slippage going on now. Cut the reverse for a bit. We're only slipping on the lead loco, so should be okay. Yeah. 
up the power a bit. There we go. On a 2.7% grade now. Carry enough speed to get up this hill. I'm giving it too much on the reverser now. I wonder if we're even going to get this train up. I haven't managed this train well at all. See the top. Oh. We've got some more slippage going on there. And let's bring that right down. Slippage or the axle off the track? No, I think we're okay. Let's give it some power. Hopefully we should hear the engine note drop off. There we go. We can give it a bit more reverser. Let the other locos push along. See. They are all turned on. Ah. That's helpful. So... Right, interesting. So, these locos are not linked up correctly at so those two are purely slaves of this one. So if you're not familiar with how to set up lead and slate locos, you essentially come along, you look at the floor of the first one. 
and you press the plus key whilst looking at the floor and then go along and press the minus key while looking at the floor of the other two. So what we are going to do now is going to make these two a slave of that one. Like so. So now, when we come along, this has no linked locos, but this one has two. Excellent. And the reason I haven't done the middle one is because the middle one is always going to be the middle one. So that only ever needs to be a slave of either of the lead two. Now this is nice. I'm liking this scenery through here. Not quite sure how that rock formation got there, but... Yeah, that's a scenic run through there. And now... We can put the power down. We know that all three locos are running in unison. I should have checked that beforehand. I do apologise for that. We may have got to our destination a bit quicker if we had. That's my bad. I didn't look in the lower left at linked locos. Yeah, essentially this poor guy was just trying to fight against those which were just happily cruising on at their own pace. some reverser. I see we get a little bit of wheel slippage on the rear but not just because I'm going so aggressive with feeding in the power. More. Yes we actually get there today. regulator a little now. Now I don't want to go too quick because I know we are going to enter a Y up here at some point I believe. I oh, know, we just come in, that's right. It's not a full Y, although I guess you could call this a massive Y all the way down there. As you can see, we're nearly there now, guys. My numptiness at not driving this correctly means this took a bit longer than planned. Give it a little more power. we head over towards the mountains. Though of course we're not actually going all the way up to the mountains. So, around here, yes, it long you're in the land there and up ahead there is some bridges so we can cross over there safely a bit of a wiggle there but we're all good can't wait over the river See our destination in the distance yet. 
I think. Yep. Ah, oh, there we go. Now pop an interview. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kill the regulator and let us coast in now. Certainly got enough speed to do so. Let's have a look. Yeah, still doing over 40. Yeah, plenty of speed. As we approach what should be an oil field. We've got another line coming in from the left there. Which is our one down to Hydro Bay, of course. Excellent. Switch over to the right hand track here. So, a little bit of speed. Just make the rest of our journey in. As you can see, we're now sending out, make a nice, sizable yard here. And there in the distance is a track that, yeah, it goes both down the Hearts Creek and back round towards Land of Goods. But we need to be. Getting on the brakes now. As we bring our train into the refinery. No, it's not the refinery at all. Sorry. This is the oil fields. So we'll bring our train to a stop there. Whoa! You are not going to stop it any closer than that, guys. <laughs> so there we are. I would say, we're looking for suggestions, maybe run that a little further up to the end here. Yeah, this would be loading point for them. So unloading. So maybe turn that on. And if I knew where point was we could check the gauge but as I don't we can see it's working though from the smoke going up so I'll just set these off and they can start filling our train We've got another track here, which is going to work perfectly if you need somewhere to drop crude oil off. Of course, I'm not sure why you'd need to. But it's cool that the option's there. And then as you can see there, there's two tracks. To our right, 
for filling up trains on that side. I do wonder actually whether we were supposed to be shunted over there, but we're over there now. We're emptying these, or some of these. And that, guys, is going to be the end of this video. So hopefully you have enjoyed this look at Libra's map. As I say, there's so much more to explore. But unfortunately, we just do not have time for it today. And over there in the distance, that's where we started our video. Over at the spawn and standard goods. But I have to say, I have really enjoyed this map. And I am going to really look forward to the next time we can visit it and have another play around. So if you like this map, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Drop some words down in the comment section. Give Libra some love for the work he's done on this map because I think it's a tremendous amount of work. I mean, I know how long it must have taken to get the materials here just to build this up. And let me tell you, it's not a short job at all. So anyway, as I say, that is going to be it for this video. If you made it this far, thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.